Hello and welcome to the Royal Road School of Carmelite Prayer. A link to the Praying with Teresa of Avila website has been provided below for you to find the catalog of offerings on this channel and the notes of today's presentation, the Sixth Dwelling Places, Chapter 10, A Summary, Interior Castle by Teresa of Avila. Tells about other favors God grants the soul in a different way way from those just mentioned, and of the great profit that comes from them. The Lord communicates himself to the soul in in many ways through these apparitions. He grants some of them when the soul is afflicted, when a great trial is about to come, or when he simply wants to take delight in the soul and give it delight. My intent is only to explain the different favors as I understand them, so that you will understand their nature and their effects, lest we think that everything imagined is a vision. The devil is very pleased to see a soul afflicted and disquieted. He knows that disturbance impedes the soul from being totally occupied in loving and praising God. His majesty communicated himself in other more sublime ways. The devil is unable to counterfeit them. These ways are very secret and hard to explain, while the imaginative vision is easier to explain. Sometimes when the Lord is pleased, a soul in prayer will suddenly experience a suspension where the Lord reveals deep secrets. It seems the soul sees these secrets in God himself, They are not visions of the most sacred humanity. The soul doesn't see anything. The favor is not an imaginative vision, but an intellectual one. In this vision, it is revealed how all things are seen in God and how he has them all in himself. This favor is most beneficial, though it passes in a moment It remains deeply engraved in the soul and causes the greatest confusion. The evil of offending God is seen more clearly. While being within God himself, we commit great evils. Let's suppose that God is like an immense and beautiful palace or dwelling. This palace is God himself. Is a sinner able to leave this palace to commit his deeds? No, certainly not. Rather, within the palace itself, that it is within God himself, the abominations, the indecent actions, and the evil deeds take place. A frightful thought that is worry worthy of deep reflection. Let us consider, sisters, the great mercy and compassion of God in not immediately destroying us there. Let us be extremely thankful to him and ashamed to feel resentment against anything done or said against us. The greatest evil of the world is that God, our creator, suffers so many evil things from his creatures within his very self, and we sometimes resent a word said in our absence. When, daughters, will we imitate this great God? Let us not think we are doing anything by suffering injuries, but we should very eagerly endure all, and let us love the one who offends us, since this great God has not ceased to love us though we have offended him much. Thus the Lord is right in wanting all to pardon the wrongs done to them. It also happens very quickly that God will show within himself a truth, and one understands clearly that God alone is truth. Unable to lie, he is everlasting truth. 
Let us conclude, sisters, that to live in conformity with our God and spouse, it will be well if we always study diligently how to walk in this truth. Before God and people, in as many ways as possible. Thus, we shall have little esteem for this world, which is a complete lie and falsehood, and as such will not endure. Once I was pondering why our Lord was so fond of this virtue of humility, and this thought suddenly came to me. It's because God is supreme truth, and to be humble is to walk in truth. For it is a very deep truth that of ourselves we have nothing good, but only misery and nothingness. Whoever does not understand this walks in falsehood. The more anyone understands it, the more he pleases the supreme truth, because he is walking in truth. Please God, sisters, we will be granted the favor never to leave this path of self-knowledge. Amen. Our Lord grants these favors to the soul as to one to whom he is truly betrothed, to the soul who is determined to do his will in everything. He desires to give it some knowledge of how to do his will and of his grandeurs the devil, in my opinion, and even one's own imagination, have little capacity at this level, and so the soul is left with profound satisfaction. Amen.